Okay, the next advanced C-sharp feature we're going to take a look at are optional and named parameters. Now, up until now, when we've been calling functions with parameters, we've been supplying values for those parameters, because if we don't, then the C-sharp compiler complains that we've left a parameter out of the function call. Optional parameters allow you to define default values for parameters, so that if you don't feel like passing in a value for that parameter, you don't have to. And the way that you do that looks a little bit like this. So I can define a function, and you can see that I define the function normally with two integer parameters, but I've got equals and then values after each one of those parameters. So here for my function, I don't have to supply values for A or for B, because if I don't, then A will default to 0 and B will default to 1. So for example, it's just as valid for me to call the function like this, where I've got A just defaulting to 0 and B to 1, as it is to call it like this, where A is now 10, but B retains its default value. The other feature is named parameters. Now, up until the version of C-sharp, I think it was 3.0, you had to call parameters in the order in which they were declared in the function declaration. Named parameters, however, change that. Suppose, for example, that I have a function it looks like this. I've got two integer arguments, one named a and one named b. I can actually just simply call the function by passing in the name of the parameter, a colon, and then the value. And it looks like this. So if I wanted to call this function with parameters that are out of order, I would simply say b colon 5 and a colon 3. And this would call the function normally. And you notice I don't have to do anything special to the function declaration. This just automatically works in C sharp. So I can call the functions with the parameters that are out of order. If I wanted to call the function otherwise, I could do it like this. I could call the function with just the value 3, which is now a is 3 in that case, and I would put the name of b colon 7, although in this case I wouldn't have to do that. Now notice that if you don't supply a named parameter, then they have to go first. So for example, if I wanted to do this, b colon 7 and then 3, that would cause an error because the C sharp compiler would say, well, wait a second. You're not supplying a name for A, and therefore I don't know which parameter you're talking about. So you have to put the non-named parameters first. Let's go over to the code and actually exercise this. So here I'm in my named optional params exercise. And in the snippets, under the named and optional parameters section, I'm going to copy over the two functions I'm going to be using to exercise this. So let's just copy these guys first and paste them into the code. And I'll put them below the main function here. So I've got two functions. I've got one called my optional param func. And you can see here that I've got a param here that's param1. This is not optional because it doesn't have a default value. This one here is optional because it's being supplied with a default value for param2. And then for the third one, which is a string, I've also got a default value, which is a string value. And it's worth pointing out here that you can provide default values for pretty much just about any parameter type you can come up with. Inside the function, all we're doing is writing out what the function was called with. And we'll write out the values for param0, param1, and param2. And you'll notice here that I'm using some escape sequences. I've got a backslash n and a backslash t. That basically means do a new line and then tab in, which will make the results a little bit easier to read. All right, next I have my named param example in which case I'm going to call this function with named parameters in the code from the main function. And again, you'll notice I don't have to do anything special to the function declaration. This just works with normal C-sharp functions. So let's go back and copy over the code that actually exercises these. Let's start with the named parameters example. So I'll copy those lines and I'll paste them into main. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is call the named parameter example and you can see I've got city name, state name, and zip code. And I'm just going to call them in different orders. So the first example is going to call it with state, zip, and then city. The second is going to call it with city, then zip, and then state. And then the last one is going to do zip, city, and then state. So let's go ahead and exercise that. I'm going to build it and run it. And you can see that in each one of the cases, the arguments were passed in in different orders, but the output is in the right order. So each one got its city name correctly, the state name is correct, and the zip code is correct. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go back to the snippets. And let's pass in the optional parameters example. Copy this, paste it over here. So now we're going to call the optional param function. And in each one of these cases, we're going to pass in a different set of values. 
This one's going to pass in just one parameter. This one will pass in two, and this one will do three, and then we'll get to this one in just a moment. So let's save and build. And now we're going to run it. And you can see that now on the lower part of the output here, I've got called with. In the first case, you can see that the first parameter was 15, and then the two second parameters were the default values. In the second case, I passed in two parameters. So the first two parameters are different, but the placeholder string is still the same. And in the third case, I passed in three parameters, which are different values and all of the default ones. So let's go back to the code and see what happens when I uncomment this one right here. Actually, before I do that, let me comment these guys out to make the output a little more readable. All right, so I'm going to save. And you see that I'm getting an error here. And the reason I'm getting an error is because the best overloaded method match for blah, blah, blah has some invalid arguments. What that basically means is because I'm using optional parameters here, you'll see that there is no version of my optional param func that takes an integer and then a string. So this is a problem here. If I'm going to pass in parameters that are being supplied instead of the defaults, I have to supply values for all the optional parameters leading up to that point. So I can't leave out the middle parameter here because it thinks I'm trying to pass in a string value to this double right here, which is not correct. So if you're going to use optional parameters and you want to supply values for parameters in different orders, you'll probably have to use the named parameters and optional parameters in the same function call, which is what we're going to do right now. So let me comment that back out to get rid of the error. Now do both. So to fix the error that I had above, what I'm going to do is pass in the value for the first parameter because it's mandatory. There is no default value here, so I've got to supply a value to that. But I want to skip over the middle parameter and just provide a string for the last one. So to do that, I'm combining the named parameter feature with the optional parameter feature. And now the compiler is like, oh, I see. You're trying to supply a string for param3, which is over here, and not for param2. OK, well, that's fine with me. So let's go ahead and build. And let's run it. And you can see now that all the cases work. And this is the most recent case we just added. So we've got the mandatory value here. The default value is now being passed in for param2. And in the last case, we have a different string being passed in for param3. So optional and named parameters really allow you some great flexibility in how you define your functions. They allow you to define default values for parameters that you don't want to make mandatory for the caller. And named parameters allow you to call functions with parameters in different orders.